YouTube fam, Torpid fam, it's Torpid here. Today we've got to be very quiet to start the guide because... Bella is taking a nap. It's a beautiful day here. The breeze is coming in. I got the fan on down here that you can't see. We're going to take you through another Resto Druid guide. Now, there's been some big changes and a couple different things. This guide's going to be 10 minutes long to cover everything. If you have any further questions, put it in the YouTube below. Come by the stream at twitch.tv torpid. Let me know. A huge shout out to Renner. Whenever I reach out to him, he's always stoked to give me the information to give to you guys. So much love to Renner. Let's get right into it. Okay, guys, so this is Renner's Armory. It's going to be in the description below. It changes up a little bit um, from time to time as he's trying new things. So let me just give you the breakdown of what he wants you to have. First thing is the Lifebound Boots with Precog as the first embellishment and the Spore Cloak over here. You can see it past my camera. As the second embellishment, you're going to have four set except for the helmet that's going to be the piece that's not tier and you're going to be looking to craft all mastery gear outside of the four set make sure you get fully enchanted and make sure you're throwing those gem slots in there everything's going to add up and make a huge difference again everything will be in the description below for you to click on and and double check live when whenever you're watching this video Okay, guys, so this is the talent tree we're going to start with. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to go depending on your play style that Renner's told me. But again, if you don't know this, you can actually import and paste a description of these talents. So right here, I'm going to go to share, copy to clickboard, and I'm going to import them. Post to read here. Name it. Actually, let's name it NAR. And I'm going to click import, and I'm going to get these talents. So this string is going to be in the description below. It looks weird, but copy this, post it. And you won't have to pause the screen to put all these talents in. All right, Torpid fam. So I'm just going to walk you through the order of an ideally an ideal healing rotation. And then I'm, it's going to clip over and I'm going to explain how everything synergizes so it makes sense. But this is what you're going to do. You're going to Life Loom, Rejuve, Grove Guardian, Adaptive Swarm, Sen Ward, Another Life Loom, Swift Men, Grove Guardian, a Rejuve. And then if you need to, an Iron Bark on top of that as well as a regrowth, okay? So if you're doing it in this order, you're gonna have a really easy time healing. Now let me break it all down for you so you understand it, how exactly it works. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna take you through the why everything synergizes together and explain a couple of talents. If you understand this, Resto Druid is gonna become completely fun for you. The first thing we need to note is mastery. Now I have 16% mastery, but for very simple math, let's just pretend I had 10% mastery. What that means is for every hot on the target, you get 10% increased healing. Clearly you see here it reads 15, but for now on we're just gonna use 10% assuming we have 10% mastery. The first thing we do is apply a life loom. Now life loom is our best healing over time effect and here's why. Firstly, it casts three stacks of mastery instantly. So when I apply a life loom, if my mastery was 10%, I instantly am doing 30% extra healing because it counts for three stacks, okay? Now, it's even more than the 30%. Again, simple math. The second thing you should know about the Life Bloom is... Uh, let me just find it here. Let me find the extra healing for you. Life Bloom's healing is increased by 6% each time it heals up to 90% and also increases the final Bloom amount. So... Life Loom is your most important haunt to track to make sure it doesn't fall off of them because it's constantly building up and building up and becoming stronger and stronger. If it gets purged, it instantly blooms and heals the target. So Life Loom is also your counter to purge. Every time they purge your Life Loom, you put another one up that's your first global because if they purge the Life Loom again, it's going to heal them instantly when purged, it blooms. The second thing is... You, you're going to have focus growth. And the first life loom I'll show you here is going to apply a stack of this. So you can see under the training dummy, life loom ceilings increased by 6% when I cast it twice, 12%, and when I cast it a third time, 18%. And now life loom is going to cost uh, even less mana with the focus growth talent. So please keep an eye on your life loom. A little bit later in the video, I'm going to take you through just another uh, really cool thing that it does. But for now, that should be plenty. So when we cast the Life Loom, boom, 30% extra healing if 10% is our multiplier. Then we're going to cast a Redrew, which is going to take us up to 40%. And at the same time, 
We're about to have a separate segment on the Grove Guardians, just a quick breakdown. But the first thing you should know that I'll tell you now is they're off the global. So it's Life Limb Rejuve and then a Grove Guardians into an Adaptive Swarm because the Adaptive Swarm needs time to travel into a Sen Ward into your second Life Bloom. Now you used to always Swiftman after the Sen Ward because there, you were able to double extend it. And now you can no longer do that. So instead, Runner wants you guys cycling in your second life loom. And then you're going to Swift Mend. And when you Swift Mend, you're going to have this weak ore in the description below. And it's going to remind you you have a Soul of the Forest proc. Now, a Soul of the Forest, after Swift Mend, your next Rejuve or Regrowth healing over time does 150% more. And typically, most situations, what we're going to do is Swift Mend into a Rejuve. However, a lot of the times, if your guy's dying, and you know you can get that regrowth off, you can cast a big regrowth as well. Again, after the Swift Men and, the, and their Soul of the Forest, when you click this Rejuve, let me just show you. When you click this Rejuve, you're going to cast your second Grove Guardians off GCD. So at the same time. And then I included Iron Bark and Regrowth down here because I don't want you to forget about Regrowth. I'm going to show you a cool trick with it later. And Iron Bark, you know, if the red's popping wings, it's Avatar from the Warrior. Both DPS are cranking your guy. You're going to synergize all of this with your Iron Bark to make sure you keep your teammates up. Now, that's the simple breakdown of the healing order. Now, I'm going to take you through a couple tricks for Resto Druid that will really help you understand what the highest level people are doing, a.k.a. Mr. Renner. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the Grove Guardians and how we've swapped to a Grove Guardians meta and how they are extremely strong instead of the, the Nourish. Now, Grove Guardians allow for a lot more sustain and a lot more help during big enemy CDs. That was always something Resto Druid lacked a little bit, and now we have Grove Guardians. So I just told you the first thing is they're off the global. So when I cast a Life Loom here, at the same time, I can click a Grove Guardians. That's extremely important to note. A couple other really important things to note are Grove Guardians heal the target you cast it on. So if you're selecting your mage and you click Grove Guardians, it's going to autopilot the mage. It's not going to go to lowest or anything like that. It's going to pilot the mage. You also need to know that the same way mastery works for you, which is the more hots you have on somebody, the more you heal. That's how the Grove Guardians work. So the more hots you have on someone when you cast that Grove Guardian, the more the Grove Guardian is going to pump heals into them. The other thing to note is Resto Druid right now really is playing around getting drinks. Now, Trents or Grove Guardians, when they're out, they keep you in combat and make it very difficult to drink. So the skill cap of Trents is knowing when you need to drink and not using them so that they don't keep you in combat. And another thing you could start trying for fun that Renner just said would be cool to mention is sometimes when a hunter's coming to trap him, he summons two of these to eat a trap. And... That's another high skill cap, okay? So these trends are going to be weaved in and out. Renner said, when outside of drinks, basically, you're always looking to press this off GCD. So you're always looking to have a Trent out that's giving you that extra healing in today's meta with the Grove Guardians. Outside of that, let me know in the comments below how you like them because I think that they're a really, really cool addition. Okay, guys, so Renner taught me this, and I think it's extremely cool. I think that when you're playing Resto Druid, one of the hardest things to replicate is the usage of cat form and combo points. Now, I'm going to walk you through the usage of cat form and combo points, but I'm also going to talk to you about Master Shapeshifter. Now, at higher MMR, and when you've got more of a skill cap to Resto Druid, Renner has been playing a little bit of Master Shapeshifter with comps that allow him to double caster shadow priest dk something that has big pressure that allows him a little bit of downtime and something that could peel him if things go wrong master shapeshifter as it reads here for cat form we're going to talk about specifically first when you do a five combo point rip ferocious bite or maim and which is typically you're going to use uh maim or rip that's what we're going to show you today you generate ten thousand mana now Wrestler Druid's weakness is they're the first ones to go Oom um, typically out of all the healers. They do have strong ways to generate mana, but they're pretty difficult to pull off. So something he taught me, we use Select Master Shapeshifter. And the easiest way to generate your combo points safely is to imagine there's three players. But what you're going to do is clone one of the DPS that's closest to you. Now when I clone Erratic and I go Cat Form and I press Swipe... When I'm hitting his Cyclone with Swipe, as you can see at the top left, I'm generating combo points safely. So into Immunities, 
you can generate combo points. So, you know, maybe you go for the second clone out, or maybe since you've gotten four, you're not scared to just get that fifth one when he comes out and run away. Now we have five combo points stashed very safely. Again, you don't even have to heal as much when one DPS is cloned because they're not doing any damage. And then from there, you're going to decide if you want to spend a rip or a stun with the maim. Now, Renner said that it's not like maims are winning every single game, but they have the power to. Two good maims in a match can help you dominate it and carry, especially at lower. The uh, Another thing he recommended is practice cat form in the clone swipe in twos first before you go to threes. And you can see right here, I get the five second stun. Mame is a kidney shot. So that is how a really good way for you guys to get started weaving in the cat form. The second form that you can use with Master Shapeshifter when you get that higher skill cap or when you find your ooming, if you just want to practice it, is Master Shapeshifter paired with Moonkin form. Now it reads Moonkin form, Wrath, Starfire, and Star Surge deal 30% additional damage and generate 2,500 mana. So what he wanted to talk about specifically was casting Wraths. It costs 500, generates 2,500, which means you're going to get 2k per Wrath. When you're in Boomkin form, remember you can't be polyed or hexed. And what you're going to do is you're just going to spam Wraths in Boomkin form as another way to start generating some mana back uh, during the game when you're safe. You know, a lot of Resto Druids, when the game's safe, they look for CC. Another option is if you can't get a drink because your Treants aren't there, you can be going into Boomkin form and casting those Wraths on top of getting that extra range on your abilities. Okay, guys, so Renner's talents that he's shown you, and I'm going to show you a couple other options, are he likes to run Tireless Pursuit paired with Feline Swiftness and your Speed Gems and just the passive uh, speed that Druid has here. So Tireless Pursuit, when you leave Cat Form or Travel Form, you retain up to 40% of your movement speed. So I'm going to have my friend here, Erratic, slow me. Now, what I'm actually trying to show you is... We're going to use a cancel form macro, which is simply slash cancel form. And what that does is it takes you out of form instantly. So what I'm going to do here in a second is he's going to chains of ice me. I'm going to go travel form, and, but then I'm going to oh, I'm going to use cat form, I guess, because travel form is going to be the bird instead of the in arena uh, stag or cheetah. So we're going to use cat form here. I'm going to go cat form and I'm going to cancel aura and go cat form ahead. And you're going to see how not pressing cat form twice is so much more efficient using it this way so what i'm going to do is instead of cat form spamming cat form winning that global i can cat form cancel aura and get out and keep that tyler's pursuit and allow me to escape so i'm going to tell him here i'm going to go cat form and i'm going to say go right and what he's going to do is change me and i'm going to shift then i'm going to cat form cancel aura the shift and i'm going to cancel aura it again so as soon as he hits you with the chains you cancel aura and what you're able to do is shift a lot smoother. Now, if I wait for a cat form, you can see it's much harder for me to get away. He's out of runics, but it's much harder. So harder. So the cancel form at macro is going to allow you to kite extremely strong. But ideally in the arena, you're going travel form. But I can't do it here. And then you're going to cancel form and run away from really anybody who's slowing you. And that's a huge thing with Tyler's Pursuit. The other thing is... He used Tyler's Pursuit, so when you leap and bash a healer, you can run by them faster and clone from a little further away. That Tyler's Pursuit out of the leap bash lets you get away so that they can't trinket kick you or trinket fear you. A lot of times the priest will try to do that. So that is the, uh, the skill cap there of the Tyler's Pursuit power shifting and the ability to dash, jump, bash a guy and get a clone on him. Okay, guys, so I want to talk about a couple more talents and some options you have. Um just before i end the video so the first thing is going to be you have photosynthesis now i haven't talked about this yet but when your life limb is on yourself your heals are 20 percent faster so what that means is if erratic is being trained and i have a life loom on him and two rejuice here you can see on the left as soon as i put a life loom on myself these hots start taking 20 percent faster now with undergrowth we can life bloom two different targets. So if Erratic is playing with a mage, and let's say the mage is very far away and there's two melee on Erratic, clearly they're not hitting my mage anytime soon. I'm always going to have a life bloom onto Erratic and a life bloom onto myself. So everything that's on Erratic, all these hots are ticking 20% faster. If I'm healing double melee, 
typically what I'm going to do is have a life loom on both of my rat and my warrior. Since they're both being cleaved, we want our strongest hot on both of them, not one on myself. So that's how you're going to use both of those. Another thing is rampant growth applies the regrowth hot to anybody with life bloom. So if I put a life bloom on erratic and I cast a regrowth on myself, which I could do from behind a pillar, he gets the regrowth healing over time, which is another stack of mastery. So those are some really important things that I wanted to make sure I covered on top of germination applies to rejuves on top of verdant infusion. When we swift men, it doesn't consume the effects and, and everything else is going to synergize. Okay, so some talent changes depending on what you're comfortable with and what you want to play. And of course, what you enjoy. PvP is what you guys want to do. We're trying to give you the best options. However, there truly isn't a best because best is different for everybody in different situations and what they enjoy. Now, in Renars, I'm always going to show you what he's doing. He likes to run the Tireless Pursuit and the Moonkin. That makes him quite squishy. So what you can do instead is we can take out these nodes here and i'll have a nether uh import string below and what we're going to do instead of taking the cat form build is we're going to take and put our tree down here where we're going to be a bit more tankier okay so we're going to make sure we pick up our bash one well-owned instincts we're going to take a root or a vortex depending and then we're going to get our three lycras and then our renewal this build right here on the left um let me just turn off my sub goal here so you can see the top talent this build on the left is going to be a bit tankier for you as we're going to get some of the damage reduction down the tree here. Some other options you have are when you need to take D curse. Sometimes you can take it out of well and instincts, but I think for the majority of people, it's safer to take something out of your astral influence because it goes from five yards to three. But in PvP, it's actually nerfed a little bit, so I can take my improved nature curse there. On the right side, we talked about how we go from circle of life and death. To master shapeshifter so when you get comfortable and are enjoying master shapeshifter it used to be a pvp talent now it's up here when you take master shapeshifter because we're not going to have our healing over effects doing 15 percent increased time when we take master shapeshifter what we're going to do on the left side of the tree here is take the improved rejuve off and swap that for the rising light here so what we're going to have is the rising light down to the innervate because we don't need that extra uh, increase in time because we're not having the circle of life reducing it instead we'll just take that flat healing and that flat verse okay so those are a couple different changes you can swap between thorns maybe reactive resonant to evokers a couple different things here high winds recently got nerfed pretty hard so you can mix it up with the third pvp talent but we're always running focus growth and keeper of the growth and outside of that guys experiment give a couple of different different things a try try the boomy and wrathing for mana try the cat form eventually or just try the tanky build and practice your healing okay guys so before i show you what my healing setup looks like here and how i manage my hots and how i really got used to resto druid please if you enjoy the content come follow the stream at twitch.tv slash torpid renner is not a streamer he likes to be behind the scenes so i have nothing to link for him but i'm sending him all the love and all the energy and if you guys see him in game on renner show him some love this guy helped you let renner know in the comments below that it made a difference because he's always super excited when i reach out and remember guys that i'm trying to grow my channel on youtube and on twitch to do stuff like this full time I want to make the channels always about helping other people and working with these great people to get you guys the best knowledge to be up to speed as you're working your real life jobs and don't have time to research all of these things or maybe want to start an alt character. One thing that I want to show you guys before I let you go is I added these weak auras right here and what they do is they track my important hots to the right of the health bars. So I found that I was struggling. You can see my cursor. I found I was struggling to know when my life looms ending, but right there you can see it glows to know my focus my focus grow stacks um i'm gonna share this below as well as my send word proc here because now that when it when it turns green here that's when you want to swift mend because send word needs to take damage read here it's yellow because he's taking no damage but i found this really really cool and really helpful to me because i didn't really you know i was like how the heck do I know my hots are on them? How can I go for those clone and those cat forms? So having it here and knowing when to refresh, right now I know I can just run around. I got all my hots. When they get purged off, they disappear from here. And after a while, you start to know like which ones are missing. So 
I'm going to share that with you. If you have any questions, come to my stream. Again, Renner doesn't have a stream, so you won't be able to talk to him. But if you ask me, I'll talk to Renner. I'll get back to you guys. Thank you for the support. Torpa fam, YouTube fam. I love you guys. Let me know what you want to see next. I think we got an Ellie Sean video in the works, so stay tuned.